heard mellowing off of probably my favorite album as a whole uh dying surfer meets his maker so mellowing it was a track written by uh me and parks actually um just a a little backstory we wrote it uh kind of together i had kind of um about half of the track written And then Parks came up with the other half, and we kind of pieced it together. It was back in 2014, and we were on tour with Windhand. And we had a couple days off on the tour, and I remember uh, that tour specifically, both Parks and I brought our acoustic guitars, and so we had lots of downtime, you know, in between, like, waiting for sound checks and things like that. Um, So we were able to work it out, and... To this day, it's still one of my favorite. It's probably in like the top five favorite things that that our band has ever recorded. It was really cool. Um, in the actual Dying Surfer session for the recording of Mellowing, um, Parks and I, we were just sitting opposite from each other and we're sharing just one microphone. Uh, that was, it was recorded in a figure eight. So uh, one mic was going towards him, or one side of the mic was going to him, and then the other side was going to me. And it was really cool. It only took us, I think, about two or three takes uh, because we had rehearsed it so much. But in this video, I am going to be going through all of the parts in Mellowing. Um, And the only difference... Uh, as far as parts is there are two different guitar parts in the intro parks is playing something up high and I'm playing something down low and but after that intro we both start to play the same thing so it's it kind of like it's like two guitars doing different things and then they meet up and then become one it's really really cool and that wasn't our intention. It just ended up being like that. I, I love how stuff like that works out. So let's check this out. Let's check out the intro. All right, for the duration of the video, unfortunately, you're not going to see my beautiful face, but that's okay. 
Um, what's more important is that you see my right and my left hands. Real quick, before we check this intro out, let's get into the tuning of this. So this tuning is going to be the same as open passageways. So it's the D-A-C-G-A-E tuning. D. A. C. G. A. E. Again. D. A. C. G. A. E. So when you strum open, nothing on the fretboard. It sounds like Dying Surfer meets his maker. That just sounds like it to me. All right, so the whole kind of general feel of this song, you're not gonna be using a pick, you're gonna be finger picking. So this, this uh, month's tutorial is gonna be great practice for your thumb technique and your pointer and your middle finger. So this kind of picking pattern here is gonna be on the intro and then kind of here and there throughout the whole rest of the tune. So put your thumb on the, uh, on the A string and then your pointer and the middle finger on the G and the B string. Now, from those who've watched my previous videos, I call out the strings not based on the tuning it's in, but as if it was an E standard. So, you know, A, G, B, E, D, E just to not confuse you and to not confuse myself because I often don't remember what the heck tuning I'm in. Okay, so practice this picking pattern. So it's thumb going... alternating with the uh, with the A and the D string and then pointer and middle are alternating between the G and the B and now thumb pointer thumb middle again that's thumb pointer, thumb, middle. Just a classic picking pattern right there that you can use that picking pattern for really anything. So that picking pattern you're going to use for this intro, but obviously your thumb is going to be playing different notes or like different strings. You know, it's going to play the low E string, it's going to play the A string, it's going to play the D string, and then your pointer and your middle are going to be playing different strings. Hey, check it out. That's why I've included a tab for you. The tab is dead on accurate. So... If you guys have any problems, pause the video, check out the tab. What I also recommend doing is print the tab right now. Pause the video and print the tab so you can follow along. All right, let's check this intro out. So on that last one right there, notice the one before. Is this kind of the same 
I I I leave my middle finger there on the on the fifth fret A string, but I'm actually not even using that. The only reason I'm doing that is just because it's just natural to slide that third one. Like that. Really, I, I, I could just do this. Because as you can see on the tab, I'm not even playing the A string on that on that fourth one. So it's So now for this intro, let's also look at Parks' part. So Parks is using the same picking pattern, the where it's thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Only Parks is playing something higher up, not higher up on the fretboard, but higher up on the strings. So Parks' bass note starts on that uh, fourth fret on the D string. And as you can see on the tab, his pointer is on the second fret on the B string. And he's, uh, and the open strings that he's playing are the open G and the open E. Let's check out Parks' part on that intro. So that ends up being a really incredible harmony over top of kind of the more bass note, uh, based, no pun intended, uh, thing that I'm doing. Really, the only thing to note, and you can see this on your tab, is the third, uh, the the third form that he's doing in there pay attention to that bar that's on your fifth fret with the pointer finger so it's um seventh fret on the d string ring finger pointer is barring fifth fret on the g and the b and then your pinky oh baby is uh is going to be right here on the seventh fret on the high e string that's kind of an awkward feel. You may feel some tension right there, and then also right there. But hey, pain's beauty, and that will go away. So anyway, that's the intro. What I recommend doing, if you guys can, um, I like to put that either in a looper or record it into like GarageBand or like Logic, and then just play, record one part and then play over it. Also, you can play along with the actual track. Um, it's all the same tuning, and it's all pretty much the same tempo. So now we're going to look at a little bit different of a picking pattern here. Um, this is going to be the part after the intro, which is this part. Okay, this is a great practice for you guys uh, as far as hammer-ons. As you can see on the tab, you're going to see all the spots to hammer on and all the spots where the open strings are. So I'm going to play this section real slow for you. So that's an open D. Hammering on second fret with my uh, middle finger. That's going to be the start of this part. So this picking pattern is going to be like this. So it's thumb, hammer on, pointer, middle, thumb, pointer, middle, ring. Next 
next part. So those hammer-ons can be tricky, especially on an acoustic guitar. So it's bass note, third fret, E string. Pointer on the on the G string is gonna hammer onto that second fret. And then on the B string, ring finger, you're gonna hold that pointer finger, and then on the ring finger, you're gonna hammer on uh, the third fret. So open, hammer on third fret, and then the high E string. And then arpeggiate down. Same thing on the fifth fret, on the fifth and fourth fret. And then now the section after that is going to be kind of a squeeze, middle, ring finger, and pinky all squeezed in on the same fret. And that's going to be the seventh fret. So check out your tab uh, as far as the, that goes. So it's an open B string in there. And then you slide all that down, fifth fret. And then hammer on. Let's check that section out. As far as the order of all these parts, I'm going to include it in the in the description as far as how many times to do each part. I'm just trying to get you guys the parts for now, and then you can either listen to the recording or kind of follow along with, with the guidelines as far as the parts. All right, next up is part three of the song, which is probably my favorite part. What you're going to do is pay attention to this picking pattern. So it's going to be thumb and ring finger at the same time on that first strike. And you're going to arpeggiate down. So, and then middle, pointer, thumb. all the same picking pattern again. That was all the same picking pattern as well. That's really the only difference right there is that extra little um, pointer finger on the on the uh, third fret on the high E string. Check it out. I love when it drops down. That's so simple. All I'm doing there is pointer finger on the first fret E string and doing the same picking pattern. Again, that's thumb and ring at the same time, thumb on the open D, ring on the high E string, and then middle pointer. And then 
land pinky finger. Make sure that you land with your pinky finger on that uh, third fret on the B string, and I'll show you why. Same picking pattern. Because pinky has to go to four, and you gotta do a big stretch right here. This is gonna be the hardest stretch of the song. And pointer finger goes on the first fret on the D string. And that, that fretted D string first fret with your pointer is the bass note, see? Again, all the same picking pattern. Land on the pinky. Slide pinky up, pointer barred, first fret. One more time. And then repeat. We slide that down to the fifth fret, and then seven. All right, let me play that whole part for you. to the fourth section, which is the last new thing that you're gonna learn for this. It's a really cool part. So Parks, this was his main contribution to the song, was this part, and it is really, really, really cool. Um, it adds like a whole different kind of dark element to the track. So check out your tab. And what we're going to do, we're going to kind of be hammering on and sliding in to this riff. Pointer, 5th fret, A string. Hammer on, 7th fret with your ring. Pick up with your pointer on the D string on the 5th fret. Hammer on again with your, uh, on the 7th fret with your ring finger. Check this out, this is what we have so far. And then you're gonna slide that ring after you hammer, hammer it on. You're not gonna pick again, you're just gonna slide it up to the 9th fret. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm literally playing five notes and picking twice. That's pretty cool. Okay, so this part. Pay attention to your tab with those open A strings, okay? Again, much slower. This next little bit is pretty tricky, so I'll, I'll try to scoot closer for you. So that sounds very simple. Check out your tab, though. So there's going to be some weird open strings thrown in there. gonna be and 
as I'm doing this, the pointer is locking down on, it, it's, it's kind of holding down the fort on the uh, seventh fret on the G string. And then pointer picks up seventh fret D string, and then we're gonna play the open G. And I'm using my thumb, my thumb and my pointer for that. Just those two. Thumb and pointer. And then now on, on this part, I'm using thumb, pointer, and my middle finger. After that part, we're gonna land on something familiar to you guys, something that we've hit probably about two or three times, just this, this chord form on the fifth fret. That picking pattern looks like this. Pointer, thumb, pointer, middle, thumb, and then arpeggiate down. Ring, middle, pointer, thumb. gonna slide up so on that it's only hitting this just for a little bit so that is gonna be that picking pattern is the same as this Which is the thumb and ring at the same time and then arpeggiate down so check this out sorry backtrack a little bit thumb ring middle pointer thumb. those two chord forms twice. Repeats the sliding up part. All right, now those chord forms are gonna be a little bit different. Check this out. Fifth fret. Seventh fret. Fifth fret, seventh fret, third fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, ninth fret. Now I'll do it one more time. back to that part number two, which actually ends the song. Let me play part number four for you one more time.
part two. That's how the track ends. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really hope that this was a helpful tutorial for mellowing. Again, my goal was to kind of ease you guys in to this tuning with the open passageways tutorial. And you're going to kind of see some similar chord forms in there. Um, and then the finger picking, really pay attention to what my right hand is doing. I think that you can, you can get a good idea as far as, as far as what it's doing throughout the whole track. And that is just as important as what your left hand is doing. Now, as far as the left hand, as long as you're following the tab and paying attention to what those are, then your right hand picking pattern is going to kind of follow along with that as well. So don't feel like you need to like, you know, totally like hardcore, like memorize these picking patterns. Just go through the tab slowly and you'll, you'll definitely get there. Like if you, if you're struggling with, with the picking patterns, if you're not used to finger picking at all, this will be a great exercise for you guys. And if you are a pro finger picker, you know, then I hope that this is a, a really fun song that you've learned. I know that I, I, I love playing it. Every so often, I'll just sit down, tune the guitar to this tuning, and then just rip through it just because I, I love hearing it. As cheesy as it sounds, it brings back a lot of really awesome memories. And I hope it does the same to you all. Cheers.